I'm going to start today with a question I have often been asked. <clears throat> How do you develop a driving career passion if you don't have one and really want one? <clears throat> I'm often asked that because people admire Howard Rourke and they want to be like him in that regard. They sincerely do. They, they, they admire that kind of life and they can't find that kind of career passion in themselves. <clears throat> now this is a, is a psychological question, not philosophical, but I'll, I'll try to give you some of the points that some people find helpful. First of all, this is a very common problem. It's not just restricted to, to objectivism. How to find something you really want and will get a passion and will feel passion uh, over if you pursue. So you should read some non-objectivist books on that. I'm sure the internet would bring up a million. One that used to be uh, good, but I don't know if it's still around or has been superseded, is um, What Color Is Your Parachute? And they give you all kinds of forms and questions to kind of help you uh, identify uh, where, where your interests are. <clears throat> now, the main thing is you've got to find your interests. Interest is not yet passion. It's not yet even necessarily desire to pursue. Something, anything however small, that might reveal what you like, even if it's fairly weak. For instance, uh, I didn't know what to do when I was very young. I knew I liked to ask certain kinds of questions. Uh, I, they pertain to right and wrong. I had no idea what philosophy was, but I thought of that. That's an area of interest. But, you know, it was no more than that. I liked the big bands and I was taking the piano. So I don't know, that was something. I liked reading fiction. You know, I had a few things like that. Nothing that I would have a clue was a career. Look back to your childhood, your teenage years, and try to pick out anything that you were interested in, interested in doing, interested in watching, whatever, just to find some, uh, some uh, spark <coughs> to, uh, to go on. By the same token, look for things that you hated or are bored with, list them, so you know that those are no good and you'll stay out of them. For instance, I, I took a test when I was young. Uh, all the kids in class had to take a, a vocational interest. And I got zero on mechanical interest and not much more on anything else pertaining to, you know, the physical uh, world. And so uh, I knew anyway, but that set the seal that I stay away from anything uh, of that kind. If you can eliminate you're in one whole area somewhere as opposed to another whole uh, area. And then you can ask, what do you like to do with your free time now? And then whatever comes uh, to mind, and even if you say, I like to go on vacation, what kind of vacation? What interests you about uh, that vacation? What do you most enjoy doing on that? You try to specify just to get little green lights. <coughs> Now, once you've got as many as you can scrape up and you've organized it into whatever area, whatever field you think includes most of them, you have to try to name what are the careers that some of them that might be possible correlated uh, to each interest. A pianist, a fiction writer, a philosopher, or uh, what, whatever it is. Now, that would be blowing up the interest way beyond uh, what it was uh, at that point. But you try to think of careers with which, if your interest could be blown up, you could imagine that. Uh, you don't have a passion at this point. Now you ask, can you find any common denominator that really names the key ones there that would really give you a direction or can you probably only say, well, these two or three uh, look to me like the most, but I don't know what they have in common. I can see some interest in each, no passion. So then what? Then I say, when you've reached that stage, you've surveyed 
the possibility that within your frame of interest, you got it down to a few, you absolutely can't choose. Now, of course, practicality comes in here too. If you're starving, these fields are all equal, and one pays a million, the other pays ten dollars. That's a factor. But I'm saying, assume all the practical side of it is out of the way, and you're down to two or three possibilities, then arbitrarily, if you can't find any difference, arbitrarily pick one, plunge into it. Uh, maybe just because the subway ride is shorter than to any other, and you have no grounds, but make a one-year commitment. No matter what you find, you're going to stay there for uh, a year. Because every job is bad at the beginning, or uh, looks good at the beginning. You can't tell anything for a year. And what you may very well find, but what a lot of people do find, they go into something with a little interest, and then they start to do... Uh, efficacious work, even creative work, intelligent work, and they get self-esteem, they get pleasure out of that. And after a year, they really are interested in this. It's, they feel they're expressing themselves, they're achieving something, they're fulfilling themselves, and then, of course, you just keep going uh, uh, from there. That's the happy ending of this process. If it doesn't happen, Try it on another. If it doesn't, then I have nothing to say. In fact, I should have nothing to say anyway because this is not a philosophy, but maybe uh, you'll find the most important thing, I think, in everything I said is try to find tiny interests if you can't find big ones and build from there. Don't expect that you're going to introspect, you know, and, oh, I just love that. It's not like falling in love in a Hollywood movie, you know, where the bells ring. You start with whatever you've got, and then you try to pursue uh, from there. But you must make a commitment to stay with it once you've chosen it, uh, no matter how bad it is, because you can't tell anything short of a year. I hope that helps. It's an impossible question to answer. I know it's an impossible question for you to, to answer.